All right, now to the trial of Jennifer Crumbly. Tonight, we're getting a look at some surprising photos from inside the family's home just after the shooting. And shortly after that, we're getting our first look at what Jennifer Crumbly told investigators as they searched her home in Oxford. Day four of testimony in the case and a slew of new evidence presented to the jury. And that includes those first photos from inside the Crumbly family home. Sean Lay is live for us tonight. Sean, there's a lot to go through here. Truly, and we've never seen those photos before. Sheriff's uh, deputy serving a search warrant at the Crumley family home just a few hours after the shooting up at Oxford High School. And we're seeing those photos for the first time. Also, there's questions if the Crumleys secured that Sig Sauer handgun, 9 millimeter that they bought for their son just days before. There's a gun safe in these photos, and the investigators say there's a combination to that gun safe. Zero, zero, zero. This, uh, this was... I was made aware this was the shooter's bedroom. The bed was covered with various things. There's some school books on it. Um, there was targets visible on the wall that had <coughs> what was apparent to be bullet holes in them. Oakland County prosecutors and Oakland County Sheriff's investigators showing the jury photos of the Oxford school shooter's bedroom, showing nearly unlivable conditions right on the walls, targets with bullet holes in them. The shooter had two bedrooms in the Crumley family home, the second basically in the same condition, a bathroom with items piled all over. In another bedroom, this is how the shooter left the gun case of the gun his parents bought for him the day of the shooting, along with an empty box of ammunition. Another photo, a gun safe was left in a closet. To open the gun safe, a code had to be entered into it. Here is the code. It was a zero, zero, zero. Prosecutors allege that James and Jennifer Crumley's alleged neglect of their son led to the deaths of Hannah St. Juliana, Tate Meir, Justin Schilling, and Madison Baldwin. Also in the shooter's filthy bedroom, an empty bottle of whiskey. Shooting video games are scattered around the house, the Crumley's vehicle, in a similar state as the Crumley home. My son just ruined his life. I'll probably never see him again. Never see him again. That's what Jennifer Crumley was saying inside the back of that sheriff's cruiser. Look, guys, that video was just played in court. We're breaking it down for you right now. So it's 6 o'clock. It's a 45-minute video. Investigators playing it because Jennifer Crumley had some instant things, reactions to this shooting and some information. Very calm, however. Again, a 45-minute video, guys, where in big, big chunks of time, she doesn't say anything. Investigators yesterday said most parents would be hysterical and worried about the people who were killed and also worried about her son. So we'll show you that video and see what you think live at six, guys. Yeah, another busy, busy day in court today. Sean, we'll right. see you again in yeah. just a bit. And our coverage okay. will continue also on this at 5.30. Christy McDonald has been spearheading our streaming coverage of the trial on Local 4 Plus. She'll join us with the big takeaways from today's testimony, including why the dean of students didn't believe the shooter was a threat and the one thing that would have changed his mind.